right. Yeah, nothing amazing going on right now. I just uh, realized I hadn't spent um, like, um, like a proper amount of time staring at the map here. And before I start doing, uh, like really getting into um, moving uh, the remainder of the Wursh army up up top here and then starting, I don't think I'm going to be doing anything, to be honest with you, with the um, uh, the 8th army. I'll take a look, but I don't really see much. I think they're pretty okay there. Everybody's kind of hunked, hunked in. I'll see if, uh, maybe take a look at um, uh, if there's anywhere like I can like properly position the core HQs and whatnot, you know, like to, uh, to make sure that I'm not um, wasting turns. The main thing though right now is I'm just trying to get ready for next turn, which is when uh, Charles Tortoise over here uh, in Danzig uh, is going to be able to finally start releasing quite a bit of uh, uh, the Festung divisions. That's what they were called, the Fortress divisions. So um, I have to get uh, that's going to be ready. And, but the only tail end bits I have to do right now is to really start moving a lot of these um, uh, strength points around, trying to figure out what to do here with the Ninth Army. But that's I'm just getting that kind of prepared. And then this bit here right along this little trail, I could have got them. Uh, okay, there's four. Uh, this is the, the re reinforcements coming in. The second, hold on here, second, fifth, sixth, and ninth cavalry divisions, I th think. Or second, sixth, seventh, and ninth. Something like that. But the second is going this way. And I think this is the that's the actual cavalry division that was with um, uh, Rosenshield, Anatoly Rosenshield over here, who's now, uh, well, used to be part of uh, SG-1 and is now being um, sent over to take over um, a third army over there. <laughs> you poor bastard. Um, anyways, um, so I'm just, yeah, this is, I'll be honest with you, this is probably a really bloody boring video or whatever. It was kind of like almost in a weirdo way, maybe trying to, I should have maybe done something like this with a, a live stream-ish. I just kind of was like, you know, I just popped on to see if uh, Charles Latoro was on or whoever. And uh, maybe I just would have like, oh, I checked to see if uh, the Compass Games thing was on or anybody else was doing some kind of live stream. No one was, so, but um, yeah, I'm not going to just whatever. Because, you know, and on a side note, because then I may get too sidetracked to not actually do what the hell I uh, want to be doing, which is um, I got to start recording. So I did record in in the play-by-play -play book uh, all the movements, and I'm just now making sure that I actually did move them on the counters uh, on the map. And if I had, then they have to, I've got to um, uh, pop them in the, in, in the master book, if you want to call out for each, uh, each side as their master book and each uh, uh, what the hell you want to call it, uh, each counter, like you see there, number 76, that has its own page, you know what I mean? So I'm just making sure that the things, and then I check them off when, uh, whatever, so now I'm just doing the next dude, number 82. We'll see if I can do that while doing other stuff in my head and uh, talk to you guys, and I will say one thing, I don't know what the hell is going on with this music, and I'm calling it music as far as I'm concerned. Um, is this uh, EM transmission? I've you know I've listened to some of it before, but I, I, off and on over the whatevers. But uh, it's never hit me this hard. Uh, so I don't know what the hell's going on right now. I'm listening to some kind of um, uh, transmission from some, a red giant. I don't know Z Hydra or something like this. But uh, it's got this. Oh, it's just uh, actually I sent the link off to someone, a colleague of mine earlier in the day and she was like uh, I can't hear a goddamn thing and I was like no you have to pump the volume like a mother because uh, it's so low in the bass register <laughs> it's just nuts anyways it's got this amazing also this sighing going on and it's just wonderful uh, th that and the Uranus one in particular like I said that one is like I I, I, um, I run to that or fly to it like I'm off to a flame. It just calms me down instantaneously. It's amazing. Um, yeah, uh, actually, she mentioned it because uh, I was saying about the anxiety and whatnot. And she said, wow, anxiety. Uh, 
not having anxiety, that must be a void to fill. And I was like, yeah, that's an interesting way of looking at it. Um, yeah, I haven't felt like this in over 30 years, probably. And that was when I was on uh, some pretty interesting medication. Um, yeah, so I, this has just been... I'm going to ride this. I'm not saying it's uh, whatever, but I'm sure the mu uh, the music's been facilitating it, for goodness sakes. Um, it's pretty sweet. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm just uh, making sure that the uh, positions on the map are uh, the same as uh, on the master thing. Also, I just realized for the in preparation for the live stream there... Um, I'm not going to be able, well, I'm not going to be able to. I could kind of feel this in a weird way, uh, like a, a, w a couple of weeks before or, what, or whatever you want to call it. Um, was that, um, and like I said, please keep my foot to the flame or whatever the hell it's called. Uh, making sure that I don't F around because, I, like I said, I want to make sure that I, I don't want to turn this into an, a part of one of the, uh, uh, you know, another segment, uh, piece of information on the Hafsberg report or whatever is that I, you know, I do want to like finish off through the Africa, uh, the Great War in Africa book, and I want to share that information with you guys. Uh, this chapter coming up, and I can feel up, uh, not this chapter, but I didn't know it was going to happen, but the, uh, a week before or whatever, I was like, you know what, I'm wondering, if, and also in preparation for can games, it's only 15 days away, is that I had to start thinking of... Um, Maybe I should, uh, and there's other stuff too, because I'm like, I, I'm trying to jam so much whatever in an hour long program uh, of the live streams. And yes, I understand that Callendale stuff's going to uh, go and there's going to be this void to fill. Um, is the fact that um, I've got to, yet again, pace myself and whatnot. And I want to do a good job for everything. What's the point in trying to ram everything in if you're just going to do, a, at least if I'm going to do just a half-assed, that's just, that's not, you know, it's not fair to anything, really. Um, no, yeah, no one wins, to be honest with you. Um, so I was going, okay, maybe I should do it every two weeks, uh, the Africa thing, uh, the Great War in Africa. And I felt a bit, like I felt much better about that. And then... Um, what came into it is this chapter right now. Um, the CEF moves in, uh, into you know into the interior of the Cameroons after t the capture of Douala, and it's um, like I was mentioning. I said earlier on is that yes, the chapters are nice bite-sized week-long chapters. This one's a little bit bigger, and I was like, holy f, where's the last, where's the last page for the chapter? You're killing me here. And I just was like, okay, maybe that's telling me I should uh, you know hold, uh, I'll do it every two weeks. So that's that bit. Um, yeah, this naval component has just been a oh, godsend yet again. I'm sorry, I'm banging on. That's why I love the comment stuff, man. Is that uh, John Longshore mentioning, you know, the uh, the thing about uh, is there a naval component in Devil Creek? And I was, I'm not saying I was being flippant, flippant, but I was probably, um, what do you call it? Uh, rigor, uh, just saying what I've heard other or para. Or, parroting that's it uh what other people have said or, or that i've read which is uh well, you know it's massively abstracted and there's no uh it it, it kind of left them a bit a lot of people kind of like oh uh like they wanted more or whatever or they felt uh cheated or, or whatever um i'll be honest with you and this is why it's not going to be uh, done in one part there's no effing way <laughs> uh, it's like holy smokes um So what this bit on Saturday it's going to be is just basically looking at uh, Osman Lee Harvey, just uh, that uh, that stuff there in the Ottoman War module. Um, uh, and ah, you're going to see later on, I was really surprised. There was a couple of passages where it mentions the Grand Campaign. And I was like, what? I didn't know. I thought the Grand Campaign was like way after the, all these modules. So I've got you know, more, in, more stuff to uh, figure out about. The neat old thing, of course, is Gallipoli is happening, right? Bing, like, rang on, rang on right now, and that's the big chunk. Uh, there is a, um, a huge uh, mention of it, um, obviously, in, is, uh, in, in, the, in that module. So I'd like to do that coming up. We'll just babble on about that naval aspect, and there's quite a bit. Um, I will say, though, and hopefully you guys um, uh, will chime in about it, is it seems there, like, for me... From my perspective, a heck of well, you'll see a heck of a lot of effort for not much gain in doing a lot of this 
work. Like for the amphibious assaults and the naval gunfire support, I was like, holy Jesus. Like, especially when you tie it in with the anemic uh, CRT result uh, for low strength points. I was like, whoa, man, this is a lot of work for talk about a high maintenance um, relationship. Uh, oh, yeesh. Anyways, that's why I looked at it. We'll see what you guys think. Um, that's about it. Um, like I said, I'll just maybe go back to this. Maybe I should just uh, go back to this and I'll stop the video kind of thing. Because, yeah, like I said, all I'm doing is trying. Oh, oh, I will stop this. This is what uh, I was saying about the. Yeah, I could have easily, man, um, made this uh, second cavalry division get a heck of a lot. Um, well, you probably can't even see it because I'm not zooming in or whatever the hell. I got these crazy little numbers. It's more for me to be honest. Well, not really. This, it was for you, but tough. <laughs> you can't see. I'm not going to get into another camera. Whatever. But uh, at, at this time, it's just like a little practice thing to see how much I could get not use a double rail line and to get to things. Um, that's not too bad for six movement points for a cavalry unit. Obviously, it's one-sixth on the train. Remember, it's all, um, all uh, non-combat infantry and anything else, really, like headquarters and whatever. It's except... <laughs> Uh, sorry, core HQs, they move like infantry unit, uh, combat infantry, which is wonderful. Um, anyways, that's not too bad. So I just tried to make sure the only tiddly bit of double rail that I had to grab um, was this guy right here. Otherwise, every, no, not this guy because he's detraining and it's still, I'm not using it this way. I'm using it only this way. Remember, it's that's the way you got to look at it. Um, I mean, obviously, there you must see what I'm saying. So, anyways, that's that. That's not too bad. What I wanted to do is get a uh, cavalry division uh, somewhere around here to start helping out. And plus, there's a big, huge gaping hole. I understand that's where the Germans are, but I'm just saying you can see where I can, you know, have some fun here. Um, the other three cavalry divisions are going to go uh, here. Remember, I have no clue that there's going to be the people's militia popping up like popcorn all over the place here. Um, so that's uh, where the three cavalry divisions are going to go up there. And that's about it, really. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and then while this is happening, I'm hoping to goodness, I think I mentioned it with uh, one of the previous comments with Charles Latora, was the fact that, um, doink, 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 um, I'm letting that other stuff percolate. I'm trying to figure out some way of, with the abstraction, not crazy abstraction, but some kind of abstraction for representation of flow of supply points and strength points where they are, and then have some kind of uh, pre-planned objectives. Like It's also from what I've been reading, um, like with the first battle of the Asanzo and so on and so forth, um, historically and the way uh, Javel Craig, uh, Dave Schroeder mentions it in the um, uh, the rules is, is like you, know, you have to stick with this broad front um, uh, strategy which is what they wanted to do with if that's the way you're going to go like you know play the scenario out kind of thing obviously if you're going to go into what I'm going to go into uh, you don't need to do that um, but uh, I want to start looking at those type of things to try to you know get into the abstraction of things so i'm like okay when we get to this point and i start laying out the austrian troops and the serbian troops and whatnot um what are their strategies so i'm going to look at historically i knew uh, well i know because uh, that would start off with the battle of colabera is going to start happening well much later like in you know mid-november or whatever or mid mid to late or something like that but anyways, that's going to happen. So, I, I mean, I've got a lot of stuff to fall back on with that. Um, but then I also would like to sway it a little bit. Let's start adding, like uh, Charles was saying, maybe um, uh, go a little bit further from what you're uh, ready for or whatever, which is maybe I should now say, well, remember, you were saying that... Uh, uh, Conrad von Holzendorf is no longer in charge of the whole shebang. He's now been demoted kind of like, okay, well, you loved uh, banging on about Serbia so much. Just focus on that and we'll deal with this. Um, and that's what's happening. So maybe now, like I said, there's already, um, it's not happening this uh, uh, month with the siphoning of the reinforcements. Um, 
that I'm going to look at later. The siphoning of the reinforcements is coming uh, via the Katowice uh, conference agreement. Some are going this way and some are going that way, you know, for the uh, the Germans to, to take control and going that way. Remember, it's everything west of the of Visloka. Um, that's really about it. So I'm trying to figure, so you're right, maybe I should start looking at how Conrad can start swaying a little bit more of the decision making of maybe uh, the pre-planned strategy or whatever. Okay, what, what are we going to focus on? And then on the flip side with uh, Rad and Putnik, uh, already know, like no, oh, oh, and then it was also, no, it was the other guy that got injured. Uh, and then it was replaced, uh, I can't remember his name, uh, Mizich or something. Uh, the guy that said, "Hey, man, we have to fall back," and that was the person. Uh, you know, they even let uh, let uh, Belgrade go, um, but waiting for that's why I, uh, I think I, t I mentioned there. I popped on the French um, counter on my other map over there uh, was because I was reading. They were saying and then later on, uh, uh, French supplies uh, were arriving uh, via Salonica. That helped when they fell back and, you know, did a counterattack and were able to uh, push back the Austrians out of Belgrade at the end of November. And I think actually there was no Austrian troops in uh, any of the original Serbian border. I could be wrong, but uh, that's that. Okay. Um, hope you're having a good time, guys, man. Uh, just love t chatting with you, obviously. And uh, that's about it. Like I said, yeah, I should go back to my whatevers. Okay. And uh, that's it. Oh, yeah. I can hit the stop thing. I don't even know if it's working again.